As we know, 3D Gaussian splatting models are view-dependent models. This means that they look best from the exact camera angle from which they were captured. However, these image angles can give some leeway, and it is possible to view the 3D model also from angles from which it wasn't actually shot. But if we go over and try to see the model from the areas and sites where the camera has not been, we will see how the model starts to dismantle and how the Gaussian groups are clearly placed in the wrong places in 3D space. So the illusion will eventually broke up. But where is the limit? How few camera angles? Is it possible to assemble a Gaussian model and what happens if we significantly reduce the number of source images? Let's see what the minimum is in this process. Hello boys and girls and Happy New Year to you all. It's only here again and I have a feeling that 2025 will be even more exciting and we will definitely see a lot of practical application on the Gaussian splatting front on this year. But before that, I have an interesting test to share that shows us the basic structure of Gaussian models and perhaps helps us better understand what role the original images and camera angles plays in the Gaussian splatting process. In my previous video I explored the structure of sparse point clouds and how it actually affects to the creation of the Gaussian splatting models. And as we now know, this new 3D modeling method is built on these three elements. In this episode I will now focus more on the number of the camera angles and therefore the number of source images. What is the minimum number of images from which a Gaussian model can be reconstructed? And what happens if we go below that number? In order to fully demonstrate this test, the example must be built again using synthetic Gaussian models. And for that, a 3D model of such horse statue was selected. I think this is a good and practical model for demonstrating this kind of a object-centric 3D scanning because it has enough geometric dimensionality and characteristic shapes. In this experiment I will again use my camera array tool that I developed for Blender and from which I will again render all the necessary source images. And of course, for the Gaussian training, we will use the Chaucet's excellent post-shot program, from which, by the way, they have just released a new beta version, 0.5. At the beginning, this baseline setup, which contains a total of 26 cameras, serves as a starting point from which we start to reduce the number of images. Here, the camera angles covers the most important six direct projections of the object, which are from the front, back, left and right view, and directly from above and below. In addition to this, we also have the intermediate viewing angles that are located at the angle of 45 degrees between these direct projections. Therefore, we have a total of 8 viewing angles in the horizontal plane in the middle, and when we raise the camera angles also vertically above and below by the same 45 degree principle, we get a total of 26 cameras that covers all the minimum view dependent angles in this 3D model. With these angles, we are able to create a Gaussian model that is completely intact. And we can see, among other things, these details that are this gap between the horse and the human figure, as well as these areas in the horse's lower body and hooves. 
And at this point, we can still test whether the call map protocol used by PostShot can create a model using the structure from motion method without us helping it by importing the camera coordinates from Blender. Can PostShot's camera tracking feature track camera location from just 26 images? And it looks like it can. PostShot managed to create a model from 26 images using just camera tracking. The camera position seems to be very much in the same places as in the original Blender model. But how about if we reduce the number to 15? In 15 it seems that the structure from motion method still works, but the model is already starting to show signs of breaking down in certain angles. How about 13? Okay, interesting. The SFM method still works and the model can be generated from 13 images, although now it is starting to become clear that certain angles no longer work and the position of the Gaussians are starting to unravel. But can we still drop a frame? Okay, now we have reached the limit. Beauchat says it can no longer calculate camera angles from 12 images. So pretty good after all, structure from motion can be done from at least 13 frames. Okay, from now on, when we reduce and train the rest of the cameras, we need to use the camera exporter function from the camera array tool to give us the correct coordinates from the remaining cameras. We can immediately try out what kind of a model we get with 10 cameras when we only use those 8 horizontal level angles and those 2 vertical angles from the top and the bottom. The training process runs smoothly with 10 images because we now have the camera coordinates. In general, the model seems to work and the horizontal camera still covers a large part of the shapes of this horse statue. But when we look at the details from the missing angles, we start to notice some disintegration and mispositioning of the Gaussians. An interesting single floater appears on top of the horse's head. Still, the model is surprisingly intact with only 10 images. Ok, let's continue and drop down the angles to those 6 direct projections. As we can expect, at these angles we are already starting to see a clear breakup and the model is no longer holding together because these 45 degree angles are missing. But still, it is not a completely unrecognizable model. Those view-dependent camera angles work, but there's not much room to maneuver before Gaussian's decay becomes apparent. But then, what happens if we go below this and reduce this image to only two? Now we only have the right view and the back view. And as we can see, the Gaussians no longer have much information about how they should be in 3D space. It is interesting to note how the dark areas are placed in the foreground and the brighter ones are boosted to the back. This also proves that even though we have a sparse point cloud in the model, it is not very helpful. It does not tell the necessary location for the splatting process and it does not control the position of the Gaussian in the 3D space, at least on this stage, and with so few images. And since we've come this far, we need to try out what kind of a model we can get with only one image. This is an interesting step. PostShot can generate a model from single image, but about little over 3k iteration steps, all Gaussians suddenly vanish, and the whole model disappears. 
and we get only empty result. So I guess we found our limit in this point. But if we stop the process before those iteration readings, we have the opportunity to see how the Gaussian are placed with only one image. I think this step shows well what the view-dependent model means. When we look at the view from the side, we see how the Gaussian layers are positioned relative to the camera angle. It's like a puzzle piece that only falls into place when we rotate the view to the right position. I think this has been an interesting experiment. But here are a few more interesting points. All of these steps I went through in this experiment were done using the ADC profile. I have noticed that it works best when we want to reduce the number of camera angles. But if we try the same with the newer MCMC method, it barely managed to create a working model when we drop the number of images below 10. For example, if we train a set of six angles with MCMC, it places the Gaussians very strangely outside the center, very near the cameras. And it even crashes the postshot if we try to calculate a set of less than six images. So the limit in the MCMC method will be met faster than in the older ADC profile. I hope this experiment was useful and you learned something essential about the roots of the Gaussian splatting with me. I believe that by optimizing the image quantities, we can find the best and most usable ways to build Gaussian splatting models. I like to remind that if you want to play with synthetic Gaussian models and you are a Blender user, you can get my camera array tool from my Glumroad online store. The link can be found in the description. Once again, if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Thanks for watching.